from Ewan McGregor donning the Jedi robes again to finally delivering live-action Inquisitors. Obi-Wan Kenobi had everything a Star Wars fan could ever have hoped for, and yet it just did not work. We could. And because of that, fans kinda hate the series now, which I know can feel a bit harsh, considering a lot of us were asking for the stuff they did deliver. It's just that the execution was just all over the place, and none of it made any sense. I'll go with him. Well, I have officer clearance. I can get you inside and I can get you access. Is your cover still intact? We'll find out soon enough. Seriously, pacing issues, bizarre plot direction, and the underutilization of everything that makes Star Wars great. Kenobi now feels like one of the worst series in the franchise now. Oh, and of course, it being sandwiched between other incredible shows like Andor and The Mandalorian probably didn't help either. But honestly, it's such a bummer because everyone was genuinely looking forward to it. I mean, Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen coming back to play their iconic prequel characters was reason enough to be excited. Princess Leia Organa, you are wise, discerning, kind-hearted. And to be fair, there was nothing wrong with their acting. Perhaps the single biggest issue with Obi-Wan Kenobi was the fact that it just felt uninspiring and generic. Now, whether you can attribute that to writing or direction is another question. But just think about it. If you take out the two Vader fights and some of the more intimate moments with Kenobi, there was literally nothing great about the show. Like the Inquisitors, who are arguably some of the coolest Star Wars villains in terms of their design and backstories, were just massively wasted. We never got to dive deeper into their motivations. Well, maybe apart from Reva, but even her story could have been so much better. Not to mention, they just looked super goofy. Now, I get that Star Wars has a history of people looking goofy, and that they were trying to recreate that OG trilogy vibe, perhaps. Still, they at least need to feel menacing, right? I mean, they're not your ordinary stormtroopers. And obviously, this whole direction and writing issue bled into other parts of the show as well, resulting in some extreme extremely mind-boggling plot decisions that felt inconsequential. The chase scenes are a good example of this. Now, if you say that you actually like the scenes where Leia kept running away from people, you are lying, because there was nothing redeemable about those shots. They dragged on for too long, and it didn't add anything to the story. Now who's hiding something, princess? You don't have to call me that. I'm just Leia. Stay here. In fact, if anything, they were just tools that the writers used to propel us into another art, which just felt forced and not earned at all. Not to mention, having multiple of these in a six episode series was just exhausting to watch. Oh, and this wasn't just limited to Leia either. Even if you take some of the other scenes, like say the first Vader fight, why does he randomly let Kenobi run away like that? Or when he doesn't kill Reva? Because duh, we gotta have another scene with her trying to hunt Luke down. You see my point here, right? Right? The character moments were not earned, and every single decision anyone made would just make you want to rip your hair out. I mean, there's literally a scene where Kenobi is quote unquote stopped by this small laser gate, when there's nothing but vast open desert on either side of it. Like, just go around it, dude. We're all on the same side here. These people, they'll leave you to, to die. <laughs> With that said, you've gotta wonder why the showrunners didn't rectify these glaring issues. Well, there's one very simple explanation for the majority of Kenobi's problems, the six episode format. Just think about it for a sec. The show felt like it didn't have enough story to fill in all six episodes. So, it used these stopgap moments to extend the plot and drag it out, which again, I'm all for more Obi-Wan content, but it's gotta be meaningful, right? Repeating the same thing over and over again, gets 
gets boring real fast in TV shows. And this was supposed to be a quote unquote limited series, whatever that meant. I mean, before it came out, it felt like it would be this really well-stitched together thing that they would have spent years planning. But of course, the reality was the total opposite. Now, understandably, Disney has tried this similar style with some of its other shows too, including some of the Marvel stuff. Though the thing is that it restricts you so much in terms of the story you can tell. You can only have three arcs spanning two episodes each, which means you never really get to develop anything interesting before hopping onto the next plot point. On the other hand, look at Andor with its three episode arcs and a 12 episode format. It was so good. Obviously, I'm not saying that Kenobi needed to have more episodes since they didn't have much story to begin with. The point is that every show needs to have its own format that fits the plot. And well, that's the biggest hurdle Obi-Wan faced. After all, it wasn't even meant to be a TV show. Seriously, during its early stages, Kenobi was meant to be a movie, which honestly would have probably been better. The plot would have been more condensed, and things may have felt more consistent as well. Not to mention, the criminally short sequences we did get with Hayden Christensen would have also been more meaningful. I mean, even if they didn't expand on the couple of scenes we got, at least they would have still been a larger part of the story, rather than a throwaway. Besides, even that Qui-Gon Jinn cameo at the end could have been the perfect post-credits moment, since it didn't have much of an impact within the show and felt unearned anyway. All of these things seem like such easy fixes, and yet it feels like Lucasfilm just decided to make the show at the wrong time, when Disney was going full steam ahead for its subscription service. As a matter of fact, there are actual reports that the show was in development hell for quite some time. Plus, many have also pointed out how it went through some total U-turns in terms of script. And again, when you look at the final product, you can see shades of that struggle coming through. But what if Kenobi's mediocrity wasn't the showrunner's fault at all? Because the series was in fact restricted by its timeline, and this in turn meant that it was never going to succeed no matter how much we would have wanted it to. You see, since the story was sandwiched right between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, we already knew what happened in the past and the future. So essentially, every single choice Obi-Wan made in the story was kind of inconsequential. There was never any danger of him dying, nor were the stakes with his Vader meeting high. I mean, sure, it was an incredibly emotional moment that we prequel fans absolutely adored, but other than that, there wasn't much going on there. They couldn't involve Luke in the fight, because then A New Hope wouldn't have made sense. And even the way they tackled Leia almost broke canon. Honestly, I feel like that's as much of a risk as the writers could have taken with this story. And yet, it still wasn't enough. Oh, and don't even get me started on the ending. In a world where A New Hope doesn't exist, and this is an original Obi-Wan plot continuing from Episode 3, he would have definitely killed Darth Vader right then and there. Like, I get that this was his best friend and all that. Still, we gotta remember, by that point, Obi-Wan knew Anakin Skywalker was gone. So, leaving a genocidal villain alive, who would then go on to destroy planets and kill millions of people? That is just mind-boggling to me. But hey, mind-boggling seems to be the running theme here anyway. And that, folks, is why fans hate the Obi-Wan Kenobi TV show. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.